Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Recently I responded to the false allegations of Fareed response. Now he has made another video and shockingly he has indirectly left Islam. He rejected clear cut verses of the Holy Quran, a hadith and the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not only this, he declared his own mujaddid Ibn Taymiyyah as one who is ignorant regarding the ahadith and says that those ahadith Ibn Taymiyyah believed to be true were actually weak. He also tries to hide the explanations of Ibn Taymiyyah and shows one page from Majmu al-Fatawa and does not show the entire context. He got the scan from me and did not even care to read the context and therefore misinterpreted Ibn Taymiyyah. He rejected the Quran, Ahadith, prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and now his own Mujaddid Ibn Taymiyyah. I proved in my video that prophets can misinterpret dreams and prophecies. He still denies this even though the Quran is clear on it. You see, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed used to make the claim that the revelations that he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are 100% correct. However, he would at times misinterpret the meaning of the revelation. Now with this statement, Farid rejects many of the prophets of Allah including Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, and Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who also misinterpreted the revelations, prophecies and dreams and this is what we proved in our previous video. In this video, I will once again show how Farid has lied to his viewers. Anyhow, we must remember that Hazrat Ahmed al-Islam made thousands of prophecies. They were all fulfilled. Only a few of them were misinterpreted. Allah is the most wise and sometimes prophets do misinterpret prophecies and this separates the wicked from those who are righteous. They stick with the prophets and continue to support them and wait for the prophecies to be fulfilled in another manner and understand that there is a difference between God and prophets and prophets may make mistakes. This is understood by all of the scholars of Islam. The Sahaba also understood this and the Quran itself mentions this. For example, they say that chapter 11, 45, 46 is about a prophecy by Nuh salam that never came to pass since his son drowned. May the curse of Allah be on the liars, Farid. When did we say that the prophecy did not come to pass? Do you not fear Allah? Ahmadi Muslims believe in every word of the Quran. Even your famous Mujaddid Albani says this, that we believe in the entirety of the Holy Quran. Do not spread lies because you cannot respond to our arguments. The prophecy was fulfilled. However, originally, Hazrat Nuh al-Islam misinterpreted it and thought that his son was included in his family and would be saved from the flood. However, if you study the verses, there is nothing there about a prophecy in the first place. It shocks me how Farid lies against the Holy Quran. He claims to be a Salafi and does not even read the verses in context nor looks at other verses which speak of this event. In this verse Hazrat Nuh al-Islam himself said, My Lord, indeed my son is of my family and indeed your promise is true because Allah the Almighty promised Hazrat Nuh al-Islam to save his family. He made a prophecy and told the disbelievers that those who join me in this ark will be saved and my son and my family will be saved from the flood. This was the prophecy of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. We see this in chapter 11 verse 37 to 39. Allah the Almighty states and build the ark under our watchful eyes and directions and do not plead with me for those who have done wrong for they will surely be drowned. So he began to build the ark and whenever some of the chiefs of his people passed by, they mocked at him. He said, if you laugh at us, we will soon laugh at you similarly. You will soon come to know who will be visited by a humiliating torment in this life and overwhelmed by an everlasting punishment in the next. 
This speaks of the prophecy made by Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. The same understanding is given by his famous scholars. For example, Ibn Kathir explains under these verses that these verses mean that Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam gave them a severe threat and a serious warning and he uses the word wa'idun which is used for prophecies. Remember, a prophecy is a claim made by the Prophet himself in order to prove his prophethood. As proven from the Holy Quran itself, Hazrat Nuh alayhi warned the people. He made a prophecy that him and his family would be saved from the flood and the disbelievers were drowned. The prophecy was fulfilled. However, he misinterpreted what family meant and it did not include his son because he was of unrighteous conduct. In the verse, Nuh salam simply misunderstood Allah's promise. This is not a prophecy. Alhamdulillah, you finally accepted that you were upon falsehood and that prophets can misinterpret the revelation. However, you are denying and saying that this was not a prophecy, even though the Quran makes it clear that it was a prophecy. And every Muslim knows this. You're literally one of the first Muslims to come out in public and deny the Holy Quran and claim that this was not a prophecy. Are you claiming that when Allah told Hazrat Nuh alayhi he would save him and his family, he did not announce it to the people? But Allah himself himself says in the Holy Quran, the prophets do not hide the ghab. And the other verses I showed make it clear that Hazrat Nuh alayhi warned them that they would drown. He made a prophecy. Then I also gave the clear-cut prophecy of Hazrat Yunus alayhi another prophecy Farid failed to address. Ibn Kathir explains that this story is mentioned here in Surah As-Safat and Surah Noon. Hazrat Yunus alayhi was sent by Allah to the people of Nineveh which was a town in the area of northern Iraq. He called them to Allah but they rejected him and persisted in their disbelief. So he left them in anger threatening them with punishment after three days. He prophesied that a punishment would come in three days. When they realized that he was telling the truth and that a prophet never lies, they went out to the desert with their children and cattle and flocks. They separated the mothers from their children. Then they besieged Allah and pleaded him with the camels and their young groaning, the cows and their calves mooing, and the sheep and their lambs bleeding, so Allah spared them from the punishment. Another example that's brought up is the Prophet peace be upon him dreaming about migrating to a land with palm trees. The Prophet peace be upon him states that he assumed that this was referring to the Yamama initially. However, there's no prophecy that's made. Fareed, these are the types of allegations you raised and you were denying that a prophet cannot even misinterpret his revelations, dreams, or prophecies. This is a dream of the Prophet and he misinterpreted it. You used to believe that prophets cannot misinterpret dreams because most of the allegations you raised on Hazrat Ahmed were his dreams which you misinterpreted. For example, the one of him going to Delhi, he never claimed that this would happen in his his lifetime or that it would be fulfilled in him. Rather, throughout the books of Hazrat Ahmed al-Islam, he explains that some prophecies are fulfilled through progeny or through the khulafa of that prophet. This is why we give you this example to correct your false belief that prophets cannot misinterpret revelation or dreams. And as you know, the dreams of prophets are revelation. Another example that comes in the form of a report that we find in Kitab al-Jihad by Ibn Mubarak, we find the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, I saw in a dream as if Abu Jahl came to me and pledged allegiance to me. When Khad bin Walid came, the Muslims said, this is your dream coming to reality, O Messenger of Allah, for it was about Khalid's conversion. He, peace be upon him, said, it will be about someone else. Then Ikrama, the son of Abu Jahl, converted, and that was the dream coming to reality. This also isn't a prophecy, since the Prophet, peace be upon him, isn't confirming who will come to Islam. 
once again freed lying against the Prophet Muhammad He saw this dream for telling the future and told his companions about it which is why they first thought that it was fulfilled in Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. It was a prophecy but it was misinterpreted. The Prophet did not know how it would be fulfilled. These are not my words. These are the words of your Mujaddid ibn Taymiyyah who you sadly mock as well now. Also notice he says, it is as if. Farid, it seems as if you think you know better Arabic than Ibn Taymiyyah now. He interpreted this to mean that Nabi wasallam said, Ra'aytu anna Abu Jahl kad aslama, that I saw that Abu Jahl became Muslim. Meaning that it isn't Abu Jahl converting to Islam. Now before you raise allegation on Ibn Taymiyyah and say he lied against the Prophet for saying that he saw Abu Jahl become Muslim, maybe you should do more research. There are other ahadiths which show that the Prophet saw dreams which indicated that Abu Jahl did become Muslim. But the true interpretation was that Ikrima, his son would become Muslim. For example, the Prophet وسلم, seeing a date tree in heaven for Abu Jahl. We see similar narrations in the books of Imam Asyuti and Sirat Halbiya. Then we have another hadith from Sahih al Bukhari. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha narrated some of the wives of the Prophet وسلم, asked him, Who amongst us will be the first to follow you, meaning die after you? He وسلم, said, whoever has the longest hand. So they started measuring their hands with the stick and Sauda's hand turned out to be the longest. When Zainab bin Jahash died first of all in the when Zainab bin Jahash died first of all in the Caliphate of Umar, we came to know that the long hand was a symbol of practicing charity. So she was the first to follow the Prophet and she used to love to practice charity. This shows that even this prophecy was misinterpreted and the true meaning was shown when Zainab anha died. Most importantly, this report isn't even authentic since Abu Bakr bin Abdurrahman, the narrator of this report, isn't an eyewitness. Now according to the ignorant Farid, the Hadith is not authentic, but according to his own scholars and their Takhrij, it's authentic based on Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim's rules. Apart from that, his Mujaddid, Ibn Taymiyyah, believed in this narration. So indirectly, Farid is claiming that he is a greater Muhaddis than Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmullah. I've actually came across an Ahmadi who was um, using this report in a quote by Ibn Taymiyyah, claiming that Ibn Taymiyyah said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, makes false prophecies. Once again, may the curse of Allah be on the liars. No one said the Prophet ﷺ makes false prophecies. The prophecies are always true. However, it is possible for a Prophet to misinterpret the words of the prophecy. And we prove this from the Quran and the Hadith, yet you call it a false prophecy, indirectly mocking the Prophets of Allah. Um, no, he doesn't. This is a lie against Ibn Taymiyyah. He never said such a thing. This whole page that's about this specific report makes no claims about false prophecies in the first place. Your own translation exposes you and it says, and it is not impossible for prophets to assume something while something else occurs. They might assume a specific matter or detail and something else might occur. So they feel despair in regards to what they thought was the promise, meaning the promise from Allah and not in the promise itself. Like as the Prophet ﷺ said, I saw Abu Jahl become Muslim. Now you tried to lie and said that the Arabic does not say that, but Ibn Taymiyyah refutes you and this is how he understood the Arabic. So when Khalid became a Muslim, they thought it was him, but when Ikrama became a Muslim, he knew it was him. Now had you cared to do your own research, a few pages later Ibn Taymiyyah explains that majority of the scholars of Ahlul Hadith and Fiqh accept that it is possible for prophets to make mistakes in their ijtihad, meaning when interpreting their revelations. And he quotes the verse of Hazrat Nuh which you disbelieve in. 
Then he exposes your other lie that a prophet cannot make a mistake while receiving revelation and he gives examples from the lives of the prophets including the example I quoted in our discussion regarding praying for the mushrikeen. In any case, what I want to do is I want to compare what Mirza Ghulam Ahmed used to do with what the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to do. After the Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina, he had a dream in which he would return to Mecca and he would do tawaf, circumambulate around the Kaaba safely. He told this to his companions and that was a prophecy. Then we have the famous dream of Sunnah Hudaybiyah where the Prophet ﷺ went out with his companions for a pilgrimage based on a true dream he saw. But he was prevented and it was fulfilled later on. The Prophet ﷺ was not told by Allah that it would not be fulfilled this year. And this was his interpretation that he would indeed go this year with his companions. However, Allah the Almighty out of his wisdom had other plans and this is what Ibn Qayyim also explains. Now you quote the prophecy of the Prophet ﷺ doing tawaf with the Sahaba. The Prophet ﷺ interpreted the prophecy to mean that it would happen that very same year. However, it did not occur that year. This shows the Prophet ﷺ misinterpreted the prophecy and the Sahaba also knew this. However, the words of the prophecy were correct as Allah did not say that Tawaf would happen that year. This is what we have been teaching you and sadly you continue to reject the prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ and based on your interpretation, this was a false prophecy. I even quoted Ibn Qayyim Rahmullah, your own scholar and you failed to address what he said. And all of your scholars know that this was a misinterpretation of a prophecy. Similarly, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claimed that he received a revelation in which he said that he would die either in Mecca or in Medina. Then Farid raises an allegation on the prophecy, I shall die in Mecca or Medina, even though the promised Messiah am on the same page explained that it means that before my death I shall be bestowed a victory like that of Mecca. That is to say as the Prophet ﷺ had vanquished his enemies through the manifestation of the majestic signs of Allah, so will it happen now. The second meaning is that before my death, I shall be bestowed a victory like that of Medina, which means that people's hearts will of their own be inclined to me. This was fulfilled and no one can deny it. To raise an allegation on this prophecy would be similar to raising an allegation on prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ which are not to be taken literally, rather interpreted. For example, he ﷺ saw a dream where he saw two golden bangles on his hands and he blew them and said that they referred to Muselma Kazab and Aswad Ansi, two liars who would claim prophethood after him. According to Farid's logic, because the Prophet ﷺ did not physically wear two golden bangles, the prophecy failed and he ﷺ is God forbid a liar. Some Ahmadis claim that this is some sort of misinterpretation of the revelation. However, this is not the case. The prophecy, after all, does not include some sort of a time limit. Once again, a lie of Farid. Hazrat Muhammad ﷺ did misinterpret the prophecy, which is why he went with his Sahaba to perform Tawaf. According to Farid's ignorance, the Prophet ﷺ knew he would be stopped, but despite this, he went with the intention to perform Tawaf. We can only pray for such misguided individuals. So here I want to share a few thoughts. First of all, why do we even accept the interpretation that's given by Mirza Ghulam Ahmed? At the end of the day, um, Ahmadis and Mirza Ghulam Ahmed all claim that there's a possibility of him getting his interpretations wrong. As explained many times, the prophets make thousands of prophecies and they are all fulfilled. They only make a small amount of misinterpretations. With this question, you mock many prophets of Allah. Someone can ask you why believe in the words of Hazrat Nuh Why believe in the ayat regarding Hazrat Nuh if he misinterpreted the prophecy regarding his Ahl being saved? 
believe. Someone can ask you, why believe in Hazrat Yunus as a prophet of God if he misinterpreted the prophecy and was certain that his people would be punished? He prophesied this and left them. In fact, your commentaries mentioned the words that Hazrat Yunus used to say that I will not return to them as a liar. Then someone can say, why believe in the Holy Quran if the Prophet misinterpreted the prophecy of the wife with the longest hands dying first or regarding the pilgrimage why believe in any prophet than Farid the truth is there's a difference between prophets and God and they make thousands of prophecies and they are all fulfilled however they make a small amount of misinterpretations in the prophecies which differentiates them from God there's no connection between dying in Mecca and Medina and um, being a victor in Mecca and Medina. Someone can say the same about every prophecy. For example, when the Prophet wasallam saw in a dream that Abu Jahl became Muslim, someone can say that has nothing to do with Ikrima being Muslim. And you will be speechless because you do not understand the concept of revelation, dreams, and prophecies. And you fail to understand that such revelations and prophecies are interpreted. I have given many examples of this from the Quran and a hadith, but sadly Farid just wants to reject the prophets of Allah. If the Prophet Muhammad was alive today, Farid would be one of the first ones to reject him because he does not believe that a Prophet can interpret his dreams. In Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet said, I saw in a dream that I moved a sword and its blade got broken and that symbolized the casualties which the believers suffered on the day of Uhud. Now an opponent of Islam can say, what does a sword have to do with casualties facing the believers. Then he وسلم, said, then I moved it again and it became as perfect as it had been. And that symbolized the conquest of Makkah, which Allah helped us to achieve, and the union of all the believers. I also saw cows in the dream, and what Allah does is always beneficial. Those cows appeared to symbolize the faithful believers who were martyred on the day of Uhud. Now according to Farid, since cows have nothing to do with believers, the Prophet ﷺ was God forbid, simply stretching the prophecy and dream. Under this framework, there is no possibility of a false prophecy. You could reinterpret anything and shift goalposts all the time. As explained earlier, the prophets make thousands of prophecies and they are all fulfilled. Hazrat Ahmed made countless of prophecies which were fulfilled to the letter. For example, the death of Le Kram, then the death of Alexander Dawi. Not only this, his miraculous Arabic and that no one would be able to compete with him in his tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha. Then the prophecy regarding the mosque of Kapoor-Tala. These were all great prophecies that the anti ahmadis can never respond to. Then the humiliation of Muhammad Hussein Batalvi. Not only this, the prophecy regarding the plague and that he would be protected. Then the prophecy that his opponents would not be able to kill him. Not only that, we have the great prophecy of the philosophy of the teachings of Islam. Then we have other great prophecies. For example, the prophecy regarding Hazrat Ahmed al-Islam's message reaching the corners of the earth. And your own scholars accept that the prophecy was fulfilled. काफिर तंजीम में काफिर हकूमतें इनकी सपोर्ट करती हैं और उनका एक बड़ा मुनज़म प्रोग्राम है मुनज़म प्रोग्राम है वो दुनिया के किसी कोने में चले जाएं वहां पहुंचे हुए हैं वो दुनिया के किसी कोने में चले जाएं वहां पहुंचे हुए हैं हम मलेशिया में गए वहां का दियानी इंडोनेशिया में गए वहां का दियानी और दुनिया का आखिरी कोना जुनूब में वहां Cap Town, South Africa, the last city, Vahaan Kadiani, our Walid Sahib gaye hain, or ya our Bhai Javed gaye hain, a Shimali, Shimali, last corner, Norway, Vahaan Par Kadiani, or Dunia ka Mashrik me, last kinara, Australia, Jazeera, Fiji, Vahaan Kadiani.
دنیا کا مغربی کنارہ گانا وہاں پر کا دیا محترم یہ فتنہ آج دنیا میں پھیل مرزا کاجانی کا ایک الہام ہے ہم تیری تبلیغ کو زمین کے کناروں تک پہنچائیں گے اب کاجانی کہتے ہیں دیکھو اس وقت مرزے نے کہا تھا جب اسے کوئی نہیں جانتا تھا اب سب دنیا کے کناروں میں اس کی تبلیغ پہنچ گئی اور واقعی پہنچ اور واقعی پہنچ اور واقعی پہنچ ہم جزائر فجی گئے علامہ صاحب میں اکٹھے علامہ صاحب نے رات فون کیا ساڑھے دس بجے ادھر ادھر صبح کے ساڑھے دس سے بارہ گھنٹے کا فرق جی اور مغرب میں نائجیریا گانا سیرا لون اور آخری کنارے تک کادیانی جنوبی افریقہ جو دنیا کا آخری کون ہے کیپ ٹاؤن جہاں دنیا ختم ہو جاتی ہے آگے سمندر ختم وہاں بھی کادیانی دنیا کے کناروں بے شک اللہ تعالیٰ نے حضرت مسیح علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کو الہام نہیں فرمایا تھا کہ میں تیری تبلیغ کو زمین کے کناروں تک پہنچاؤں گا اور پھر یہ بھی فرمایا کہ خدا تیرے نام کو اس روز تک جو دنیا منقطع ہو جائے عزت کے عزت کے ساتھ قائم رکھے گا اور تیری دعوت کو دنیا کے کناروں تک پہنچا دے گا اللہ تعالیٰ نے حضرت مسیم علیہ السلام کی تبلیغ کو اور آپ کی دعوت کو اور آپ کے نام کو دنیا کے کناروں تک پہنچانے کا وعدہ کیا ہے بے شک یہ وعدہ ہے وہ یہ کام اللہ تعالیٰ اپنے وعدے کے مطابق کر بھی رہا ہے اور آئندہ بھی انشاءاللہ کرے گا ابھی ہمارے بھائی عبد المتین صاحب بتا رہے تھے کہ سعودی عرب کے پاس کتنے وسائل کوئی کمی تو نہیں ہے اور خصوصاً حرم پاک کے اوپر جو وسائل لگ رہے ہیں ان میں بھی کوئی کمی نہیں ہے ہمارے حرامین شریفین کے اما وہ جو خطبہ دیتے ہیں عید کا یا جمعہ کا خطبہ ہوتا ہے اس کا صرف چار زبانوں میں ترجمہ ہوتا ہے لیکن قادیانی وہ مرزا مسرور وہ جو کچھ بولتا ہے وہ دس زبانوں میں براہ راست اس کا ترجمہ ہو رہا ہو ہر سال یہاں کانفرنس ہو رہی ہے کسی نہ کسی صورت میں وہ ختم نبوت کا پیغام آپ تک پہنچتا ہے آپ کے ذریعے سے کسی یعنی آئے کے کانفرنس کے حوالے سے الحمدللہ کتنے ملکوں میں اب یہ ہمارا پیغام جو ہے پہنچ رہا ہوگا تو جیسے وہ لوگ اپنی جھوٹی نبوت کے پرچار کے لیے اپنے ہیڈ کوارٹر کے ساتھ ملے ہوئے ہیں ہم لوگوں کو بھی یہ جو ختم نبوت کا مشن ہے اس کے ساتھ اقدام در میں سخنے ملنا چاہیے جہاں کہیں ختم نبوت کانفرنس ہو اس میں شرکت کریں جہاں کہیں ختم نبوت کے کورسز ہوں اس میں شرکت کریں ابھی مولانا نے بتایا کہ کل پیر کو انشاءاللہ شاء خواتین میں پردے میں لیکچر ہوگا انشاءاللہ تو جو لوگ اپنی بیگمات کو بھیج سکتے ہیں ان کو بھیجیں فرض ہے کیوں کہ آج کادیانی صرف ان کے مرد کام نہیں کر رہے ان کی عورتیں ان کی بچیاں ان کے بڑے ان کے بوڑھے جوان بچے مختلف ناموں سے انہوں نے تنظیمیں بنائی ہوئی ہیں اور وہ تبلیغ کر رہے نو آفٹر دا پروفیسیز آف دا پروف محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حضرت احمد علیہ السلام میڈ دا گریٹس پروفیسیز بیکاز ہز پروفیسیز ور وتنس بائی تھاؤزنڈ آف پیپل نو اونلی دیٹ دے ور پبلش تھرو آؤٹ دا ورلڈ اینڈ دے ور گروپس آف پیپل انوالو فار ایگزامپل وتھ دا ڈیتھ آف لے کرام آل آف دا ہندوز آف دا ایریا وتنس دا فلفلمنٹ آف دا پروفیسی or he would claim that his newborn boy is going to be the promised reformer. And then soon after, the boy passes away and is like, oh, the revelation actually meant I was going to be given two sons. Again, Fareed lying, the promised Messiah never claimed that Allah told him that that son would be the promised son. He challenged his opponents to show such a reference, and they failed to do so. You will also fail in this. In fact, the promised Messiah gave a time limit for that son, and it was nine years. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so you can get notifications for every new video. Also make sure to like and comment on the video and follow on Twitter and Instagram.